Okay, seventh graders, let's start looking at reform. Um, when we talk about reform and a new American culture, that is going to be the title of chapter 15. The word reform is going to mean, in this instance, uh, change. Okay, and we're going to be talking about change in the American culture between the years 1820 and 1860. And chapter 15, one is titled The Reforming Spirit. Okay, the reforming spirit. Now, in addition to this uh, mini lecture, I've also posted a number of important video links for you to watch on chapter 15, section one, which is going to address specific reformers that we're going to talk uh, briefly about in this tutorial. Also in 15, uh, on your Schoology page, I've posted the chapter 15, section one Quizlet links with the vocab terms that you're going to need to know. So let's begin by looking at the vocab. When we talk about the reforming spirit, uh, we're going to be talking about social reform, which is an organized attempt to improve what is unjust or imperfect in society. Social reform goes on today. We're not just talking about uh, social reform existed not only during the period of 1820 to 1860. Social reform exists in many uh, forms today. But we're going to be talking about these types of reforms in 1820 to 1860 that were common. Um, they were attempts to improve what was unjust or imperfect in society. And the second word is revival, a huge religious meeting usually held outdoors. And those are the two, uh, two of the vocab terms. The rest of the vocab terms for 15.1, again, are going to be included in your Quizlet deck. Now, an important point that I'd like to make before we start looking at the reading here is that it is not a coincidence that social reform and revival are both going to be vocab words of section. One of the connections between social reforms and religion is that these social reforms that we're going to be looking at today, many of them are going to come about in our country because people's religious beliefs largely uh, Christian religious beliefs in the United States in the, in the early days of our country, these religious beliefs are going to motivate people uh, to take action to improve things in society that they uh, saw or that they viewed as unjust. So just bear that in mind as we're talking about uh, reformers and the reforming spirit. We're talking about a connection between people's religious beliefs and their desire to make their society, to make their civilization uh, more just, uh, more, more right, and uh, more tolerant uh, for people who uh, typically were left out of the, uh, the process, the political process, the societal process, and for people who were kind of considered on the margins at the time. Uh, between 1820 and 1860, a variety of social reforms gained, gained support in the United States. The reform movements had both political and religious roots. So I mentioned a moment ago the connection between uh, religion and social reform. There also are going to be connections between politics and social reforms. The political roots of reform went back to the ideals expressed in the Declaration of Independence. These ideals included liberty and equality. Some reformers pointed out that slaves had absolutely no liberty, and they saw this was wrong. Others argued that women had few rights. Uh, under the Declaration of Independence, uh, which talked about life, liberty, and the ability to pursue happiness, uh, women and uh, African Americans, uh, both free and enslaved, were, were, were generally left out of the discussion. So reformers are going to use the Declaration of Independence as a, uh, uh, a justification for their demand for reforms on the political front. Now, the religious roots of reform included the Second Great Awakening, uh, an important vocab term, which was a religious movement that swept the country in the early 1800s. People attended revi uh, revivals, which were outdoor uh, meetings, usually held under a, a, a large tent. And they were taught that they could choose to save their own souls. As a result of these uh, religious beliefs, as a result of the Second Great Awakening, 
uh, many people decided to reform their own personal lives. And some felt that they also should take it a next step, take it the next step and to help improve not just their personal lives, but to help improve society. And one of those reformers is going to be a woman named Dorothea Dix, an important social reformer dedicated her, uh, herself to improving conditions for women confined in prisons and in mental hospitals. I have posted a video of Dorothea Dix on the Schoology page that I'd like you to watch that will supplement uh, our reading on her. Now, reformers had a number of goals, and we'll talk about these when we uh, look at the chart below. One of the most important areas in which the reformers worked was in educational reform. Before the 1820s, few American children attended public school. Public schools were rare and teachers were very poorly trained and paid. Education reformers urged that more money be spent on education. And by the 1850s, most Northern states had set up public elementary schools. Education in the South, however, was slower to improve. In most parts of the country, African-Americans had little chance to go to school. So in the late 1820s, some women reformers organized the temperance movement. This movement was a campaign against alcohol abuse. So as we're continuing the lesson and as you're watching these supporting videos on your own, just bear in mind that um, there will be some additional videos on the temperance movement and on uh, educational reforms. I'd like to take a look at the uh, reform movement chart at the bottom here. Um, reform movements in the mid 1800s, it lists the problem on the left and the solution on the right. Okay, so one of the problems, and we mentioned Dorothea Dix, the mistreatment of the mentally ill, we'll see in the video, uh, the additional video that I posted that the mentally ill were treated oftentimes as criminals. Okay, and the solution that reformers proposed was that uh, new mental hospitals uh, be built to treat people with mental illness. Also, another reform that Dorothea Dix looked at was the horrible conditions in prisons. And the solution to that would be that better prisons would be built and cruel and unusual punishments would be outlawed and debtors would no longer be treated as criminals. A debtor is someone who owed money. Oftentimes, before the mid 1800s, debtors who couldn't pay their debt would often be locked up uh, in, in prisons uh, and treated as a criminal for not being able to pay their debt. We're going to talk also about the alcohol abuse, which was a serious problem in the early part of our nation's history. And reformers began the temperance movement, which was a movement to ban the sale of alcohol in some states. And we're going to look at a, a video of a, a woman uh, by the name of Carrie Nation and the links that she went to to uh, support and to push through a, a banning of the sale of alcoholic beverages. And again, another problem that the early nation faced is limited educational opportunities. And one of the solutions that reformers came up with were more public schools will be built, colleges open for teacher training because teachers were not very well paid and not very well uh, trained. We're going to see colleges open for training teachers. Uh, one of the colleges in our area um, uh, University of Albany when it when it first opened and it doesn't date as far back as the mid 1800s here but it was originally a teachers college U Albany was the State University uh, of New York Teachers College and it was opened with the primary uh, focus on teaching teachers how to teach okay and also a solution for limited educational opportunities in the early part of our nation's history in the mid 1800s was the opening of schools for the deaf and for the blind. Okay, a couple of questions at the bottom here. Um, what were the roots of the reform movement in the mid 1800s? And you can answer that looking at the reading. And the second question relates to the chart, identify two problems and describe the responses of the reformers. So pick two of the problems here and how reformers worked to create a solution. Don't forget your vocab terms will be linked on the Schoology page as well, in addition to some important videos on the individual reformers that we've discussed here today.